Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to um, find the mean and the standard deviation of the sample means um, for a quality control situation. Um, what we have here is a quality control manager has taken four samples with five observations, each of the diameter of a specific part. The following table shows his findings and the diameter for each of these is measured in inches. Okay, um, so what we have here is sample one. These are all of the diameters that were measured for that specific sample, sample two, sample three, and sample four. So the formula that we use to find the mean of each individual sample is we are going to take the sum of all of the values in each individual sample. That's what the XIJ stands for. The I stands for the individual sample sorry, is the individual diameter measure for each one in here, and J is the sample that it's taken from. So if I said X bar J would be like X bar 1, X bar 2, X bar 3, so it's the mean of each individual sample, we use subscripts, especially when you're working with more things, just to keep it straight of which one we're talking about. So if you wanted to, you could put the sum individually where you write them on the top, or you can just keep it in table form, and we can say that we want to find the sum of sample one. So all we would do is add the 5, the 5.3, 5, 5 4.7, and 5.1. So when we get that, the sum of this column would be 25.1. Okay, um, the sum of the second column, so if I take the second sample and add these all together, so this is going to be my xij that I'm going to put in the top, and I should keep it the same, the sum of xij. Um, the one to n just means that you're starting with the first one and you're stopping at however many you have in that specific sample. In this case, it would just be from one to five. So for the next one, if I add this column, we end up with 25.4. If we add the next column, we end up with 25.8. And the last column, the sum is 25.6. So these numbers I just got by adding these all together. So like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then if I look at the decimals, the 3, 4, and 6, I know I didn't do that correctly because normally you start with this column. Um, but for all of them, that's what we ended up with. That's how we got the values was we just summed um, each column. Okay, so now to find the individual sample mean, we're going to take each of those individual sums and divide it by 4. So for this first one, the x bar 1 would be 25.1 divided by the number in the sample, which is 5. So if I take 25.1 divided by 5, I end up with 5.02 inches. So the mean of the first sample is 5.02 inches. I would do that for the remaining samples. So the next one I would do 25.4 divided by 5, which ends up giving me 5.08 inches. If I take 25.8 and divide it by 5, I end up with 5.16 inches. And then for the last one, I would take the 25.6 and divide it by five. So when you're coming up with an estimate for the sample mean and the sample standard deviation of a sampling distribution, you have to first start by finding the individual sample mean. So this is an important part. You can't just find the mean and the standard deviation of all of your individual samples by adding them all together. You do actually have to find the individual means for each sample first. And then to come up with an estimate, it's going to be the mean of all of the sample means. So that's where we're going to go next. We're going to compute an estimate for the mean and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And basically with this, we're using the central limit theorem. And the central limit theorem says that the mean of a sampling distribution will approach the population mean. So if you don't know the population mean, then you would find the average of all of your sample means. So in this case, since we don't know what the population mean is supposed to be, what we are going to do is we are going to take each of our sample means and add them all together and then divide by the number of samples that we took. So that's what this formula right here is saying. X bar bar is just saying it's the mean of all of the sample means is going to be the sum of the individual sample means divided by the number of samples that were taken. So M in this case just represents the number of samples taken. 
So for this particular example, what we would do is we would take x bar bar is equal to the sum of our individual values. So I would take the 5.02 plus the 5.08 plus 5.16 plus 5.12 and then divide it by four. It says to round to four decimal places. In this case, it ends up being three, um, but we will put it as four decimal places because I know sometimes, like if you're working with specific software, when you're plugging in your answers, it has to be exactly what they tell you to. So if I add all of these up, I end up with 20.2. 3.8 divided by 4, which gives us 5.095. And then um, because I want it to four decimal places, I'm just going to put the zero at the end. Otherwise, you could leave it if you're not using um, software and they're not super picky about the rounding, you round to four decimal places when necessary. It really just depends on your homework platform. So for this, the mean of the sample means is going to be 5.095 inches. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution, normally, if you know the population standard deviation, the central limit theorem tells you that you would take the standard deviation of the population and divide it by your sample size. So in this case, that would be five, but we are not going to do this for this one because of the fact that we don't know what our population standard deviation is. So to find the standard deviation when the population standard deviation is known, that's what the sigma x stands for. The sigma x just means the population standard deviation is unknown. We're going to use this formula where we take the mean of each individual sample and we subtract the mean of all of the sample means. Okay, so we're going to take x bar j means that we're going to take each of these values right here, the 5.02, 5.08, 5.16, and the 5.12. And then we're going to subtract this value from it and square it. So if it's easier for you, you could set up a table and put this into a table form, or you can just write it out. I'm going to just write it out. So we would take sigma x bar, so this is the standard deviation of the sample means is going to equal, and I'm going to not put the square root first just because this is going to take a lot. So my first x bar is 5.02. And then I'm going to subtract the answer that I got on the last part, the 5.095. And then we would square that. And then we're going to add the next one. So our next sample mean, sample 2, was 5.08. And we're going to subtract the 5.095 and square it. And then we're going to continue with the next one, which is 5.16 minus 5.095 and square it. And then for the last one, we would do, um, for the last one, our sample mean was 5.12 minus 5.095. For this specific process, if you have access to um, technology or you can use technology, it makes it a lot easier because if you, for this we only have four samples, but if you have 100 samples, you are never going to do this by hand. Um, you will use technology like Excel or Minitab or SPSS, or you can use graphing calculators like the TI-84 or TI-INSPIRE. And I do have videos for the TI-84 and the TI-INSPIRE. I can put a link to those above. So after you set up all your work, you're going to divide by M, where M is the number of samples. So since we had four individual samples, we would divide by four. If you were looking for the variance, I did not ask for that in this one, but if you were looking for the variance, you just wouldn't take the square root because remember that the variance is the standard deviation squared, or you can say that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if you were looking for the variance, this is what you would do. But since we're looking for the standard deviation, we would put this all under a square root. That was a terrible square root, so let me try that again. It's very hard to draw a square root this big. Okay, so now what we would do is we would simply plug that into your calculator. I'm not going to waste the time to do that. I'm just going to come up with what the sum is. I've already plugged it into my calculator, and I found 
that the sum of the numerator is 0 0.0107. So if I take all of these deviations and square them and add them up, I get 0 0.0107 divided by 4. And then if I plug this into my calculator and I round it to four decimal places, I end up with 0 0.0517 inches. For this one, I did have to round it to four places. It did actually go past that, um, but I rounded it for four to four decimal places as it stated. Okay, so just kind of to recap, if you have to find the mean and the standard deviation of a sample means, um, you're going to start with collecting your samples and then find the mean of your individual samples. And then you're going to find the mean of all of the sample means. And that's going to be the estimate for the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means. And the standard deviation of the sample means is found by taking each individual sample, subtracting the mean of the sampling, um, the mean of all the samples together, squaring it and dividing it by the number of samples that you have taken. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.